35192. Want to send me a text? AlanCoxShow.com for all the other stuff. Got the latest Pound Take podcast up there for you as well. New episode of the Bill Squire Show. And uh, thank you today to our uh, assistant in the video department, Fender Gabal Trip. Is it Gabal Trip? Yeah. Gabble Trip? Gabble trip? Gabble I don't trip. know. I think it's Gabal Trip. Or is it Finder? Fender. It is Fender. It is Fender. I defaulted to Fender, but, um, you know, Mary is our resident sex defender. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, Cleveland Auto Show tickets for you uh, in about an hour. Um, Monday, I'm trying to think of what, we're out tomorrow, but uh, back on Monday, let me just double check, yes, back on Monday, we're going to see this Estonian rapper on Sunday night. Oh, yeah? The Grog Shop, yeah, this guy Tommy Cash. What does that mean? It means he's a rapper from Estonia. Where is that? It's over in Eastern Europe, right? Oh, I have no idea. Former Soviet Republic, I think. Is he still coming? Mm Mm-hmm. As far as I know, yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. you come? Is there something happening? In Europe? Yeah. I mean, flights are expensive. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That'll get you. That yeah. might... They need Frontier. <laughs> they do. Yeah, he might. Estonia is just north of Latvia. It's on the Baltic Sea. Latvia just locked down, didn't they? No, Lithuania. Lithu- well, that's south of Latvia. Lithuania locked down? Didn't, I thought I saw that this morning. I could be wrong. Oh, I don't know. I got a lot of information this morning. I was taking in too much for my brain. And you I mean because of the Ukraine thing? Because of the Ukraine thing. I thought it was Maybe. Lithuania had like closed their borders or had It borders declared. Belarus. So yeah. yeah, that's all north of Ukraine. But yeah, maybe so. Politics are not my strong suit and neither is international geography. So Understood. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was thro- yeah. A lot was thrown at me this morning that I was trying to retain. But. Yeah. Is Estonia where Melania Trump is from? Oh, I don't know. Oh, she's from one of those countries. Or maybe Slovakia. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, this guy Tommy Cash is doing a show on Sunday night. We're going because friends of ours have an exchange student from Kazakhstan. And so uh, she made some comment a while ago uh, when we were all hanging out that she was going to go see us. Ra- and co- we're all half drunk. And I go, we're going to this show. I've never heard this guy. It's I don't know what's going on. I'm like, night. we're all going on a school night, no less. Sunday night uh-huh. to see Tommy Cash. So I'm excited. Don't know anything about him. Have I want to go to in. any of his stuff. You don't want nope. to hear any of it. I do not. I don't know if what he if raps in it? English. Huh? What if you hate it? You just leave? Then I'm only out 20 bucks. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean? Because um, what if he loves it? Trying to evolve, Mary. Mm -hmm. Trying to expose myself to things that maybe it wouldn't immediately occur to me. Okay. And so my entree into this was uh, talking to this exchange student about it, and she is over the moon for this guy. Cool. And so I'm looking around. I go, this was a couple of months ago. I go, we're going to this. This might be one of those things where you're getting a much more intimate experience because you're seeing him here as opposed to... Where he's most popular oh, in Estonia? Is he, like, is he huge yeah. there? I, I, I don't know where he's huge. I mean, he's got his his videos have lots of views. He's he's got four hundred thousand followers on YouTube, so he's got fans. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, is Gwen was like, "We're going to be at this place. There's going to be eight other people because who's heard of this guy?" I go, "Oh, I guarantee this place is going to be nuts to butts." Yeah, because that's just the kind of act <laughs> where you could. I mean, the grog shop's not massive. You could get enough three hundred people. Yeah, in yeah there. you could get enough people in there to watch this kid. So. And they might travel from places to be there. Like from you, Latvia. Yeah. <laughs> or Lithuania. Good time, good time to get out of that area. Yeah. Use the concert as an excuse. Mm-hmm. Sir, I have tickets. I have to go. You know how there were people who were stuck overseas when COVID hit, like they couldn't get back to their home country mm-hmm. because of border protections or whatever? There could be people who were over here from the Ukraine just on a vacation. They're like, we want to see Tampa. And then they can't get back. Or here in Cleveland. You know, Cleveland proper has... Taken like seven or eight hundred Afghan refugees that are resettling in Cleveland. Wow. Cities around the country take uh, re- Afghan refugees and resettle them. And I was reading that Cleveland has got like seven or eight hundred of them. Mm-hmm. Some hot ones too, which is always helpful because you want to make sure that those people uh, don't lose their lives uh, in a home country that's constantly under duress. Mm-hmm. Because why? It's always sadder when hot people die. 
It's truth. Hey. There's far fewer of them. So, um, Alan, you're going to be surrounded by Russian mobsters at this show. So many tracksuits. Maybe Bert Kreischer will show up. What do I know? Maybe he's a silent fan. Oh, man. I was thinking about that today because Bert Kreischer spent last year a, filming a movie about his time in Russia. Mm-hmm. Like a fictionalized version of it. Yeah. Yeah. The machine, right? The machine. Yeah. And with everything that's going on now. But he's not in it. No, he's in it. Who's he playing? He plays an old. He plays himself, but I don't. He, you know, it's like I think it's one of those things where it's like when I was younger, I was there, and then I like see. this is like I'm going back because something happened, and sure. I got, and it's got uh, Timothy Chalamet plays the younger him, yes, well, and he plays the current him. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm just wondering if this all this, this situation is going to have an effect on that movie being released because it could be one of those things where things get. Bad enough that they go. Well, we're not putting out a movie about Russia right now. That oh, you look mean good. like when the interview? Yeah, with um, Rogan and Franco had to get pulled because of Kim Jong Un, and then like what else? There was there's been all sorts of incidents that, where things happen. Uh, the the movie about the aliens and it's because the the kid got shot. The aliens. Oh, this is I'm I'm doing. It's a Ben Stiller movie. It's it's a local group of people trying to keep their neighborhood. Oh, safe. neighborhood watch. Neighborhood watch. Yeah. So they like had to change it to the watch, and oh, because of Trayvon Martin. Because of Trayvon Martin. Right. Yes. And it ended up not being a good movie anyway. Right. But it's still, they didn't even advertise it. They just kind of were like, yeah, hey, yep. we'll just put this on, just kind of keep it as that. Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah, mean, listen, I, you might be right. I mean, that may cut into, uh, wouldn't that suck? You get <laughs> finish it. It would suck so much. People don't realize how hard it is to get even the smallest movie made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to go hat in hand, no matter how big of a star you are, and get somebody to pay for it. Especially now, when it's all streamers and who cares about the studios that much. And, you know, biggest stars out there have a hard time getting funding for movies. I think you're in for a treat on Sunday. From everything that I've watched without the sound on... <laughs> Like his, his, I think so too. I think you're going to, whether or not you love it, you're going to have a pretty strong reaction. That's what to I'm it. saying. I'll have like, an experience. Yeah, you're going to have an for. experience because he. Uh, yeah. He seems like a weird dude. Yeah. I'm basically these days looking for any excuse to get over to that Mongolian barbecue joint in Coventry. It's my dad's favorite. It was oh my dad's my favorite. God. Restaurant. I haven't been to that in years. Gwen's like, we're going. I go. Yes, we are. He loved it. He would always talk about, "Oh, this is it's the best food you've ever had. You don't you don't even understand good, man." I'm like, "Okay." When I was uh when my uh older kids were little and I was going there all the time, we used to on Sunday mornings we would go to this IHOP. And right next door was the BD, the Mongolian barbecue. And it was closed like for good. I go, "How does that place go out of business around here?" Mm-hmm. Cuz I don't think it's expensive or anything. No. You're right next to an IHOP. Somebody goes, oh, the IHOP lines out the door. I'm like, yeah, go to the BD. Is anybody around here watching a show called Adults Adopting Adults? No. Never heard of it. Nor had I. But this show, apparently, they're uh, putting it on pause. This is over on A&E, which is quickly becoming um, TLC. Show called Adults Adopting Adults. Uh, A&E pulled it after concerns (laughs) that the star of the show... Might be creepy. It's like a Norm MacDonald joke, you know? <laughs> they found out when he was on a show called Adults Adopting Adults. A guy named Danny Huff is the guy in this show. There's probably somebody listening right now who watches this show. I never heard of it. But um, people are saying that he had an ulterior motive for adopting a 20-year-old girl. Pointing to his own admission that he tried to adopt an 18-year-old girl that he later fell in love with. This is a guy in, like, jean shorts and a tie-dye swirl shirt and whatever. So, whatever you're into, there will be a cable show about it, you know? That's the crazy thing about these shows is you're taking regular people and just putting a camera in front of them. Well, that's why people watch it. That's why it's compelling. Is because it's like but they, it's not they're real. not actors. They don't know how to be in front of a camera. Well, but regular people aren't compelling. You have to put them. You have to. The premise of these shows has to be so outrageous, and then you you work backwards. You reverse engineer a show, mm-hmm. or in Pound Cake's parlance, you back engineer a show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So Adults Adopting Adults is apparently this guy who, and this is a brand new show. The show just premiered a couple of weeks ago, and they were going to, they're only up to their third episode. They were going to release a fourth, uh, but people apparently had been freaking out about this show. The show follows a handful of couples who are looking to adopt other adults. With this guy in Ohio. There's so mm. many people from Ohio. Aren't you of course. <laughs> and his wife, uh, uh, we're the Florida of the North. Yeah. Said it for many years. And his wife, Christy, became the breakout stars of the series. But uh, not in the way that they had hoped. They are planning to adopt a pregnant 20-year-old from Austria who the guy had met online. And now people are saying... Well, this guy's trying to pull a Ted Nugent. Remember wait a Ted minute, Nugent? Wait a minute. Ted Nugent famously adopted a 14-year-old to get a sex with her with her parents' blessing, by the way. He's like, "I'm the Motor City Madman." And they were, I don't know where she was from. He's a Hawaiian or something. And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, adopt our daughter and take care of her." And of course, he just wanted to pork her. Why do you why do adults need adopting or are these all foreign cases for like to live here? Like, I, do you, I assume it's probably yes. I mean, because you can't can you adopt a you, twenty-year-old here? You can. It's like, but what's it's the more, point? It's almost more ceremonial. Oh, like where you're like, okay, like they're taking my last name or whatever. Okay, but I think it's like legally nothing changes. I mean, you but then they're you have, right. They're a legal adult. They can do whatever they, whatever right, they want. Right, right. But it, but I'm talking like, but your parents have legal rights to you still as an adult. Like, like what? Like like if you die? Yeah, if you die, stuff okay. like that. Next of kin type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So they said that clearly this guy's trying to bring her into the house for something other than because she, I don't know, she's pregnant. I don't know if these two have their own kids. Um, but uh, he puts, he put the girl in a trailer right outside his front door and, you know, he's taking her to the medical appointments and blah, blah, blah. He said, uh, I want you to stay with us because I like hugging on you and you're awful sweet. So, a guy, I want to know where in Ohio this is. Of course, the guy says everybody's crazy to accuse him of anything. And not just crazy, racist. Hmm. Because he said, unfortunately, the complaints come from the blacks. <laughs> Whites aren't racist, he says. Black History Month, BET, all black colleges, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Racism is alive and well. Oh. That's great. You guys got your own education, and you guys acting all so ditty. Don't forget where you came from. Who allowed you guys to read? Us mean white people. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are great. That's what this guy says. <sighs> got your little BT network. Yeah. Why don't you go t call Tyler Perry? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he the savior of all black people? Go call Madur. Also... I'm curious how he's arriving at the uh, conclusion that black people are the ones complaining about this show. <laughs> it doesn't even seem like a show that would attract black viewers. Uh, anybody can watch anything, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I like how he rattles off five things when there are like 4,000 channels for, you know, everybody else. You guys got your own, uh, got your whole 28 days. What more do you want? Want the rest of the calendar? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we make every month Black History Month? We want to learn about the, the suffrage you guys had to go through. <laughs> you're, suffrage. You, you know your own you're suffering. <laughs> no, so, uh, take your pick, you know. Go well, both. But you know, how can we be racist? Your own people sold you to us. <laughs> <laughs> you go on a boat, right? You go. You like cruises, don't you? <laughs> it was just a cruise. I mean, listen. <laughs> we were talking. One stopping in Cleveland. <laughs> In a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, going around visiting the Great Lakes. Yep. <laughs> like uh, he, don't you? <laughs> Pau King makes a good point. No, he makes a compelling yeah, point. He's, he's killing it. <laughs> I got to get you on this show. I'll try. Yeah. Historical black colleges. Huh? What about historical white colleges? Hmm? That's right. What about our roots? Our roots are racist. They really are racist. But our <laughs> it has to be racist. You would pick at our college. Just let him go. Just he's. I know. Just keep, keep going. going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. I'm, I'm curious Cody? where you're going with it. I don't know. I think that's all I got. Oh no! Once yeah, we embrace just getting it, into yeah. it. Yeah. But hey, good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, you should watch this show, Pancake.
Or at least complain to this guy. It's definitely not on BET, so I won't, I won't watch it. I only watch black channels. <laughs> what's, what's meant for you, yeah. <laughs> what's the other one? Um, God, what's the other one? It's called One TV or... Oh, uh, TV One. TV One. There you go. I used to see bus cards for that. Now we got Fox Soul. Still in Chicago. Huh? Fox Soul. Really? Yeah, there's another like one. Like part of the Fox uh, yeah, it's news? The, it's the black... Well, it's... Well, no, the said Empire, station. though. Yeah. Fox yeah. Soul? Yep. And they put all the black people... It, it, it has weird, like... You have to look at what it. What happened to Bounce? Is Bounce still around? Probably. Remember on Bounce? Basic Cable. That's where I watched Simon Says with Dennis Rodman <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And Dane, Dane Cook. Cook. Yeah. yeah. And I don't I don't know how to explain it, but like Fox Soul, it has like a different camera color. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but like the lighting. A different hue, yeah. The it looks like almost like a cheap camera. I'm like, they put them in there. What 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 are they? YouTubers? Like, come on, man. <laughs> they got webcams. Can't get them better lighting. And it's, they're always sitting there at a desk with like a microphone. I'm like, because they're y'all not paying for a ca- or a mic guy. You can't afford a boom mic, guys. Come Guess on. So, right? Don't watch Fox Soul. Don't do that to yourself. All right. Well, anyway, this guy says it's all racism because white people aren't racist. Black people are. And that's why they're complaining about him trying to adopt a pregnant 20-year-old from Austria. Mm. It's all the... Uh, Attention, white people! Shut the f*** up! He's trying to watch his show now. Adults adopting adults. He's trying to hurry up and get, bring her over here so he can, you know, stick it to her because she can't get pregnant again. Uh, I'm serious. It's yeah. It's this is like the 90 day fiance in the grossest way possible. But also, you have to listen. There's no small amount of resources and manpower that goes into putting on any one of these shows, especially through a network that is as high profile as A and E, which is part of some larger conglomerate. I don't know if that's part of Discovery Media or whatever it is. If you're going to have a show about adults adopting adults, you know that if you do just a just scratch the surface on vetting these people and you're going to find out they've tried to adopt adults before cuz they want to do stuff with them or to them. So by the time a show gets on television, you're like, "Yeah, you can watch it and point and as you guys say, feel better about yourself." But everybody knows you're going to find a guy like this. Who, to be clear, hasn't been accused of anything other than viewers watching and going, well, of course this guy wants <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, this is something sketchy about Danny it. Danny and Christy, they, here it is, a childless couple in Chillicothe, Ohio. Where's Chillicothe? Oh, cool. it's sticks? outside of Columbus, and it is rough. I have performed in Chillicothe twice. Rough in what way? Uh, it is a very drug and prostitution heavy area. Really? Yes. Like to Maybe the point, he's trying to turn her out. To the point where the girl who booked my show was like, do not go anywhere near this hotel, this convenience store, this, this, this. Like There was a news story out of Chillicothe a few years ago where like women just kept going missing from that town and it turned out they had found a bunch of them like locked up in this hotel, this like cheap hotel train and they were turning tricks and stuff on drugs and stuff Whoa. it's like not it's not a great area well this guy apparently this was a unilateral decision because it doesn't sound like his wife wants much to do with it uh he said he wanted to do this uh he said he tried to adopt an 18 year old before but he fell in love with her oh boy and he cheated on his wife before which remains a sport sore spot for the wife so they're just looking for people but again how he came to the conclusion that it's black viewers who are it might be maybe people on TikTok. <laughs> We're giving this a hard time. This thing just premiered. So if you've been waiting for a long time for a show about adults adopting other adults, got to get in there and uh, do it. Not the least of which to see uh, the majesty and luster that is Chillicothe, Ohio. Attention, white people. Shut the f*** up. Ooh, I got to uh, take a break. You want to text or something, 35192 uh, to get there, alancockshow.com if you want to watch, and we'll be back after these. The Alan Cox Show.